guys, I'd love to welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. This is a service, the weekly update on highly on holdings. Uh, just before we get started, full disclaimer, uh, I am a shareholder in the company. Um, I, I share my perspectives on this and a lot of other companies as of late. Uh, I've been um, uh, really immersed in these uh, the highly on uh stock that the company uh, and the vision for a cleaner future. I think we're in unprecedented times right now. Uh, I think it presents a, a, an extremely interesting and, and unique uh, opportunity uh, within the transportation industry looking to reduce uh, carbon emissions. And I, I want to speak um, bluntly in this video. I, I don't um, really like the whole uh, opinionated um, type of, of perspective. And I, I know there's people who watch my content and they, they hate it. <laughs> it's like, you know, I, I just responded to a comment that sent, said that this is a, a pump and dump. I, I guess I guess the interesting part for me is how often I am provided validation to suggest how, how stupid the retail community is a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, y your reputation precedes you. Honestly, if that's your approach and application to stock market investing. Now, mind you, my community that gets it, they're completely exempt from that. Um, so don't be offended. And if you are a little bit, perhaps maybe entertain a little bit of what I'm talking about here. Um, this is social media, okay? You don't have to like me. Um, you can hate me. <laughs> you can make presumptions about me. You can make presumptions about what my message means for others, um, how I'm losing people money. Um, the sheer reality of it is, if you had paid attention to the over 1,000 videos of content that I have, um, you would understand specifically that the stock position that I've just declared to you now, just for the sake of transparency, is one that I have 100% conviction on. It represents less than 9% of my portfolio right now. So it's a little more heavily weighted um, than one of my traditional rules that I try to stick to in between two and 4%, no more uh, of a weighting toward that. Here's the thing, guys, markets at record high. Um, there was a long time there where I actually wanted to invest in passive investing, um, but I didn't, I didn't really I couldn't because I, I, I didn't want to be contributing heavy to the market um, at an all-time high. Uh, passive investing is a little more, more interesting to me beyond the dollar cost average schedule that I run on my passive investing um, to, to, to do so at times like this. And I, I've just completed some content that I'll be rolling out through the channel to explain just that. I am dumbfounded sometimes as to what people feel is... Uh, is, is advancing toward a, a, a progress in dialogue uh, in that you, you think it's um, your opportunity to come onto a social media opportunity um, and, and throw stones at me. I run a Friday live stream. Um, it's very open. Uh, I keep the door open. If you would like to DM me and set up a schedule to come on and you can have the entire 60 minutes unabated to tell me how I've got it wrong how I'm an asshole, how I've got this thing totally screwed up, how what I should be doing with my money, and how your strategy is so much better than everybody else to where you think that you want to climb out behind that rock of yours and throw stones at people who are trying to get ahead like myself and many others. It's an open invitation. The irony in that is nobody ever takes me up on it. Nobody. Look, I don't have to do this. I'm fine. This is stock market investing. And I think the irony in the whole thing is people's definition of just that. Stock market investing gets misconstrued to be all kinds of different stuff. Ryan, you are bullish on highly on. Therefore, it means that I must go and dump my entire wad into the stock right now because this YouTube guy who seems really excited has, has dumped all his money into the stock as well. See, you, you twist it around to make it something that makes sense for you, all the while defining an environment where you are not the one that is held accountable for your own actions. In other words, it's easier to blame the fall guy, somebody like myself, who steps up and tries to provide an awareness piece to a company like this and many others. Uh, I don't quite understand the polarized environment around this company. Um, there has been times over the last two years, which I've been a convicted shareholder uh, over that entire time, 
Um, I'm down in my position. Can I deal with that? Absolutely. hundred percent. It doesn't play into my criticism of a company. It doesn't play into um, my, my conviction on getting pissed off. And therefore that somehow contributes to how much stock I own in the company. Furthermore, I don't typically pay a lot of attention to what others do. I don't. And this really just kind of sets the retail community apart as being really uneducated. I, I, I think probably a lot of the retail investor community, contrary to what I uh, preach upon on my channel and, and really try to share the opportunity for, for all people out there um, as the power of, of realizing the power of investing, um, you, don't, you don't effing deserve it. You don't. Just get the F out of my face. Go read a few books. Educate yourself up. And when you've come to the table with 1% of the conviction that I come to the table with in my investing application, then we'll talk, okay? But I, I'm, I'm really, really discouraged coming into 2022 with everything going on that is out of my control, absolutely. With regard to highly on holdings and, and reporting, what I felt was a fabulous quarter. I, I, I thought coming off of the last quarter, what I heard and my expectations were zero. I said that many, many times to you guys as I roll out my commentary on Hylion. And for you guys that don't like the long Hylion videos, get, the, get lost. I, I don't need you around, okay? I understand the potential of this investment. If you have better things to do with your time, go buy an $80,000 truck to waste money on that society will deem a successful move on your part, then go do that. Shut me off. I don't need you. You don't need me. Okay. Get lost. Go fit into the masses. Go be called upon with the sheep of people who do not understand the very opportunity within investing to understand how powerful it is. You don't deserve it. You don't. All right. Again, the open invite is out there for anybody out there who wants to take continued pop shots at me. Talk about, you know, my program as if it's yours. It's not yours. It's mine. Um, my half a million bucks is mine. Um, I've never made over $75,000 a year. Uh, and I've made $75,000 a year over the last just couple of years. Uh, I started out at $36,000 a year with my salary. That was 17 years ago marked. All right. Uh, so for you Nimrods out there that make hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars and you don't have two red cents to rub together, or you think you're rich or you've been bestowed upon wealth because you're a trust fund baby, you think you can come on and judge me, go ahead. I'm from the dirt. I don't care. I'll go toe to toe with you. I have no problem with that, man. Uh, I come from the, the trenches. All right. I've earned every bit of what I've got. There's no doubt about it. And I certainly am always trying to remain hungry on identifying what it is provides true value when we're talking about this stock or others. And I find it ironic how companies like General Electric that just had shambles with their books going on behind the scenes. Unintegrous actions that were just, they were criminal in nature, right? Companies out there that seemingly get a pass like Tesla with all of the promises and uh, undelivered results from a company like Tesla. And again, there's people who will comment down below and they're like, Ryan, you suck, Tesla's awesome because the stock is up. Uh, again, I, I, I fit you into that retail community that is just absolutely bananas with regard to judging a company based on the stock price, okay? It, it's not how you do it. And, and you might say, well, Ryan, you're sour because you didn't invest in Tesla. My fundamental analysis provides me all the insight I know to, to invest passively in the S&P 500 and own just as small uh, of a piece of Tesla as I need to and no more. I don't like the cars. I think it's a discretionary item. I think it costs more to run a Tesla. It's a luxury item. It does not appeal to the masses. And, and I think it's worse for the environment. So I find it ironic how people come to me and they're like, it feels really good to, that I'm helping the environment by going and driving my Tesla. Bullshit. Bullshit. Come on. Wake up and smell the coffee, guys, all right? This is investing, okay? This is investing. And it's been really disappointing this week. Um, channels that I've covered and coming out with messages just out of left field. Ileon is a scam. Ileon is not a scam. 
okay? I'm here to tell you the best of what I know. If I thought that it was, I would tell you that it is. It's not, okay? The, the, the good folks at, Tom, at, at uh, Hylion and, and led by Thomas Healy, the CEO, that just turned out some phenomenal sets of interviews provided by Jason with JMAC Investing, did a fabulous job, traveled down to Austin, traveled down to the headquarters, was able to drive both a diesel truck, which I thought was pretty funny, bouncing around like a crazy, <laughs> he's looked like a bobblehead. <laughs> I thought, man, that, that's a great job right there, man, to beat your body up like that. And then to drive the hyper truck ERX, I thought was a fabulous carry on for the community. And these are the funny things that when I read those, those comments and those pop shots at, at me and the community, just shut your trap. Go do something else with your time. You do not obtain the mental mindset to own this stock and you don't have the successful mindset to make it anyway. So just continue to, to, to drone on with your life and do what it is it, that you do with your time because you're one of those people that think that somehow you're justified or you're contributing to the conversation in a manner that people care about when you come onto the channel and you offer those comments like this is a, a pump and dump. I have a huge position in this company, um, just like BlackRock and, and just like some of the other major brokerage houses out there that own millions of shares in this company, okay? I'll be called upon with them. And it just makes you look like a complete idiot, right? When you make pop shots like that, and those are the worst, all right? Some of the content creators that have come out through YouTube have really disappointed me over the last week. And it, it's just, it's all opinion-based and, and it's all, you know, nothing is verified. And, and we have Detmar Logistics and the help of Drive Mix Game and Dexter coming out and providing that, that over the road validation, he explained the 6% the, the fuel savings and the 30% uh, fuel savings. If you took a truck unloaded and you drove it down the road, you'd probably get higher into the fuel savings. If you load it down and you have an overload ticket to haul, let's say frack sands, you're probably not gonna save that 30% on the fuel side and understand that range. But just to put something out there making presumptions about highly on holdings that somehow they they need to th th verify what what they're stating what 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 more do you need from a, a company like that that is driving the trucks in the fleet that has already done their validation what do they owe you to provide that validation and i i do apologize for the the soapbox a little bit but I tell you what, it never ceases to amazing how different people think than me. Never ceases to amaze me. And it's awesome through social media too. My channel stalled out to where it's not growing at all, which is wonderful. And people have come on and they've accused me of doing highly on to somehow grow my channel. This is hurting my channel, okay? Um, if I wanted to just fall into the whole YouTube game, I would come out with 10 minute highly on videos, not say anything, and I'd still get the same number of views. But the people who appreciate me providing that awareness and keeping the, fl the highly on flag flying for people and understanding my bullish conviction to highly on, right, uh, as it reflects through my stock ownership, I think is absolutely a progress in the right direction. And one year from now, we may have that validation. To the bear's point, maybe the company will go under and then everybody will be happy. We don't need to do anything for the environment. Let's just continue to kill off the planet. Let's just continue to pollute, knowing what we know. The fact of the matter is that the trucking industry is the number one polluter. You know who understands that more, which is really just solidified my bullish conviction on this company, is industry itself. I think they're willing to do the right thing. I do. I think they're hungry for solutions. I think the only thing that I could say that's deficient in Hylion is not having a product right now, because I believe they'd be selling it right now <laughs> with the uh, average diesel prices up over five, five dollars. I saw a video clip that came through YouTube that showed somebody filling their diesel truck and the bill was a thousand dollars, over a thousand dollars to fill that unit. I said, you know, if you've got multiple fleets out there and you can save to, to, to somebody's point, which was saying, this is terrible, this is unproven technology, and that if it only saves you 5%, well, 5% to the bottom line, 
compounded over a fleet of trucks. It is a big deal, it is a big deal. But, but, but I take it one further and, and, and provide that clarity from Dexter. He broke this down from a trucker's perspective, which I am not one, but it depends on what type of load and demand is on that truck. Guys, this isn't rocket science, right? And, and, and it's unfortunate that I feel like sometimes I have to come on this, this awareness piece on Hylion, and I would love to talk about the list that I have with regard to people who don't know this company, can be provided a little bit of an introduction to the company and understand where they are at this current juncture, where they've been or where potentially they, be, they may be going. But instead, I have to address a retail community of a bunch of morons that just don't, under, don't invest in this company. Just get out. Don't do this. Don't do speculative investing, which this is. Well, it's a pre-revenue company, Ryan. No, it's not. Not anymore. Pay attention. If you're taking these pop shots at me, I would suggest listening to, your Q, to the Q4 earnings call if you're smart enough to understand what they're saying. Because I, again, I, it's seemingly, I don't, and I, don't, I might be the idiot. I, might, I really might be. Well, let's put that aside. I might be the idiot. I like who I am. I'm completely satisfied, just like every other convicted investor out there for whatever reason across the board in the, the, the myriad of stocks that they have. I've built up my stock portfolio from $1,500 to where it is right now at a half a million dollars. I won't apologize to anybody. I produce results. Maybe you should pull your head out of your ass and, and try listening every now and then as opposed to uh, throwing pop shots at because I find it interesting, man. People do it over social media for the convenience of doing so. And, and I think probably if we looked below the surface, those are the people who are probably the least eligible to, to judge others and, and, and further to recognize that people like myself, I, I don't judge others. I'm trying to help people. I really am. Is entering into this stock, buying 100 shares at $400, do you honestly think that that is an insurmountable risk at this point? Investing a little bit in the S&P 500 right now down 10% year, year to date, it is, is a huge, huge risk. Here's the thing, it doesn't matter. People need to be doing their own due diligence. They need to be doing their own research like I have, all right? Those pop shots that are provided to me speak nothing to the due diligence that I've done and the conviction that I own on this company, all right? Well, let's get into the meat and potatoes here. These are the facts as I see them and People can dispute the facts all they want and they can debate, a, debate around them. They can leave their comments. That's the beauty of YouTube, I get it. Um, I'm not one of those that uh, uh, completely sells out to the YouTube game. I don't really care. I say what I want, when I want, how I want. That's how I've always run the channel. Um, I, I will not uh, succumb to the man. <laughs> I will not sell out and, and, and do something that I don't wanna do. Right now I'm doing highly on videos and I'm doing promotional content. That's what I want to do. If you don't like it, again, I would invite you to unsubscribe to the channel because I'm actually trying to trim the fat from the channel anyway. If you don't want to be here, I don't want you here. Um, you'll come back 10 years from now. I guarantee you that. Um, the Independent Investor Channel will not have 30,000 subscribers. I can guarantee you that, okay? And you'll look back and you'll be like, wow, I, I really wish I would have paid attention to this guy. 10 years ago, now I'm 10 years behind. I wish I would have just, again, listened to what he said, not been offended by what he said, because maybe I did have my head severely up my backside in that I was always pointing fingers at everybody else and never really paid attention to myself, all right? This company currently has no debt, okay? In an environment right now and seemingly a government that doesn't want to talk about the, the debt, uh, and seemingly an environment where the, the, the amount of debt that you have to somehow grow your business and, and, and continue to push out and promote maybe the moat that's been built out over many, many decades, AT&T comes to mind, right? Is this a company that can fail? Is this a company that could actually uh, pay off their debt? Is this a company that is just going to inevitably be servicing the debt for the rest of their, the rest of their uh, um, um, existence? Who am I to question those things, right? There are stocks that are in favor and there are stocks that are out of favor. Um, the, complete, the EV space right now is completely out of favor, but they're not 
they're not alone. They're not alone. We have companies like Matterport, fabulous company, out of favor. Palantir, fabulous company, out of favor. SoFi, out of favor. If you're in the small cap or micro cap space, you've been crushed in this market. Um, there has been no, no exceptions to that rule. No exceptions. And hyleon has been drugged down with it. And so I think when a 50 order comes through on the last earnings call, it's going to get overlooked. It's going to get brushed over uh, in a market like this. Um, I think Hyleon has not been provided a conducive market to enter into. Just bad luck. Okay. That's that's no fault of Hyleon. And, and some of the most recent rhetoric has been doubling down on things that I was kind of addressing six months ago, which I believe that they were being a little too silent on their outreach. I've been pleasantly surprised over the last couple of months. So where I'm quick to provide scrutiny, hell, I believe that that scrutiny is warranted. I just don't do it to do it. I, I don't feel good doing it. It's just how I feel at the time. And I've always said it's business is business, but doubling down on those observations now after the last Q4 call and closeout of what I felt like was a very dismal year for the company coming into 2022, having some very articulatable uh, timelines going forward uh, for what the company plans on doing with the fleet and demo rollouts, uh, the integration of the Innovation Council, um, putting those uh, trucks to the test of the, uh, of the fleet rigor uh, in their applications. Um, and then going to commercialization in 2023. If that if that's too much for you, then get out get out of town. I said two years ago, if you were going to invest in this company, you would need at least a, a five year time horizon. We're at year two, two, not five, two. And and where where I'm quick to receive scrutiny, I tell you what, it's amazing to me how much bitching is going on right now. It's it's amazing, you know. It's just amazing and it's appalling. The company has no debt. That's a positive. They've got really good cash on the books. Generated the 200,000 of revenue, pretty insubstantial, unsubstantial, um, immaterial as Sherry Baker would put it. I agree with that. Uh, but it, it, it is a sign that the company is starting to generate some revenue, starting to collect some deposits on the Hypertruck ERX. The, the, these are facts. Um, and every fact that I put out there is misconstrued as being somehow trying to pump the stock. I, 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 I don't understand that mindset. I don't. And the more you spread that propaganda, the more it keeps retail investors in a box and being incapable of enjoying an opportunity like this. And if the stock ever does recover, I'm going to remind people of this. Because it's very times like this where I stand on an island. And trust me, I'm looking around and there's, there's nobody with me. All right. We'll have people crawling out of the woodwork saying, see, I told you so. And let me tell you what, this guy right here, the marshal, is going to call each and every one of those people out. And I will do it over social media because I don't care. Again, I'm more interested in the facts. I'm more interested in the truth. Okay. I gave a bear and a bull thesis last week for my highly on rollout. I did two videos in the same day. I thought that was a cool way of expressing how holistic I try to be with my application here. And I would suggest that you guys do the same. But the fact that the company has no debt really does speak to its cash position. I'd like to see the stock price get a little bit more healthy. That way, their um, access to capital is going to be that much more strong when we move into the potential for commercialization. And Thomas Healy talked about this with his interview with Jason, the potential for going global, which I, I think is years down the line. I think there's a lot of work here to be done to solidify the domestic market here, but I, I, good things on the horizon, okay? Hylion is not looking to sell cigarettes to people and kill people. They're looking to help the environment reduce the carbon emissions. And I'm so tired of the questions that I get. Why can't a company just invent something like Hylion, but not like Hylion, just kind of different from it, and then go into business just like Hylion and put Hylion out of business? You know how sick of that I'm here, I've heard? It's as if McDonald's can't survive in the industry without Wendy's. Or Wendy's can't survive without McDonald's. Or 
there's only one pizza place in this entire country that, that can survive and all everybody else that wants to make a pizza, even though it's similar in nature, right? We can't have competition in the industry. And to be honest with you guys in answering that question, I do not at this current juncture see any competition. I just don't. And, and the only pop shots that can be rendered as well, the Hypertruck ERX cannot, that, that's not validated that they can get a thousand miles. Really? I have no question. I have no reason to believe that they can't. There's a counter argument to everything, right? It pisses me off more than just the stock and the company. The stock and the company, I've been an investor my whole life. It's all the other extracurricular bullshit that I like to come on. I actually do like to dispel a lot of those notions, man, because a lot of you guys need a lot of learnings, man. You need a lot of discipline. You need a lot of education when it comes to stock market investing 101, let alone 406. Highly on holdings is 406 investing, okay? You, you got to go through your first three years of, of investing education before you get to this level. And you want to bridge the gap to highly on and say, well, you know, if I invest in it now, Ryan's really convicted. He's done his due diligence, which I have. You enter into the company. And if it, if it goes tits up, it's all Ryan's fault. <laughs> if, if it goes up, I'm, I'm the baddest investor. And I could tell everybody, you know, shooting pool with all my buddies that I'm a badass investor. When I'm out there, you know, smoking my stogie and, and shooting golf with my buddies, I can tell them how awesome I am. When I, when I invest in this company and, and I'm not going to mention Ryan because, you know, it's not going to be important at that time, you know, <laughs> dude, most people are assholes. I swear they can take no ownership over their own program. All you commenters to my channel, take some ownership over your own effing pro program, take some ownership over your own effing program. All right. You want to invest, invest. If you don't, don't grow a set. All right, grow a set and identify for yourself what you think might work in investing. How about that? Instead of justifying coming on and throwing pop shots at me, all right, look in the mirror, ask yourself, I can't do that without Ryan giving me all the answers. Yeah, it's because you've never taken the second to think on your own and do something on your own. Wake up. I'm not being rude. I'm actually trying to help you. This might be the first time that somebody's tried to get under your skin and, and try to rip the Band-Aid off for you because you've had somebody fluffing your ass your entire life. Wake up and smell the coffee. Like I said, invest or don't invest, all right? I don't care. You shouldn't care about me. Don't, don't, don't care. The only person in this life that should care more for you is you. That's it. And I find it ironic that a lot of people want to come on and they want to pay attention to this guy. God damn, but Ryan seems kind of aggressive. Jesus, he, he seems angry. The truth of the matter is I'm not angry at all. I'm a happy man. I'm a coach, a serviceman, a father, and a husband. I'm super stoked. This right here is just an investment. That's it. And it, it's an investment. It does not make my genitalia big, bigger. All right? It doesn't take, make me feel better or worse about my life. It doesn't. But you guys seemingly have all kinds of time to come on and think because the stock price is somehow recessed. Again, I, I find your timing on this really, really suspect. I do. Because while the company is doing this, retail investors are in this constant civil war with each other. And they can't get out of their own damn way in understanding that the system in and of itself is designed to keep you down. Stop bitching and complaining to each other and start identifying some personal empowerment methodology for yourself. Get your ass up off the couch and do something about it, okay? Do something. Don't invest in Hylion, to be honest with you. I don't want you to have this opportunity. Don't do it. That's okay, Ryan, it's going to zero. Great, don't invest in it, okay? But make me a promise now, when this thing is at 10, 15, 25, 35, and 50, don't invest in it then either. OK, if you don't want to invest in it now, then don't invest in it in the future. All right. Make me that pledge. I, stupid retail investor, pledge to not invest in this company when it's politically correct to invest in it and not when only Ryan and Ryan alone is standing on an island saying that this is an opportunity to look at. Don't invest in the company, but look at it for its merit, its vision, 
and its strategic business plan going forward. They have the money to fund the plan, okay? And they can do so without the compliments of taking on any new debt. Sherry Baker just said that. She spoke English too. She wasn't speaking German. She was speaking English on the last quarter call. If you listen to it, which I've listened to now multiple times, that's what she said, okay? We have the ability to execute on our fully funded business plan without taking any new capital. I don't know what else to say. She's the CFO of the company for crying out loud. I'm fairly certain she knows what she's doing, okay? I would fairly, I would suggest this. Every word that's come out of Sherry Baker's mouth, and I haven't heard her being interviewed outside of a couple, which are phenomenal. They're home runs. Listening to this lady is phenomenal. She has such a phenomenal business mind. I actually think if she thought that the stock was going to zero, that she wouldn't have only not just bought stock within the last couple of months. She would have just pulled chocks and went somewhere else. She's a valued commodity in this company, no doubt about it. She's perfect in the pocket as the CFO. She's absolutely phenomenal. She's a 10 out of 10. Highly on knocked it out of the part when, when she hired her. Oh, well, the, the stock price needs to continue to come down because we need to just beat the shit out of this company because it has no value. Positions like Dan and, and Sherry and, and, and Sherry uh, Lance, which has just come on board, those all add little increments of value to the company. But to her admission, this no debt thing is great. Everything's fine. CapEx is where it is per year, been spending about 135 million, which I'll talk about that a little bit when I break down the numbers on what I think are the line in the sands, the real the numbers that I'm looking at year over year uh, to, to, to suggest that this company is going to hit that, uh, that neutrality, that, that balance between earnings, revenue, and profit, and, and, and cost uh, of, of doing business, the, the actual cap up, uh, CapEx to keep the lights on and, and keep the government flowing, which again, I take Sherry Baker's facts, which are around 135 million. She goes back and forth on that a little bit because they're looking to go a little bit capital lean, which is a capital lean structure in and of itself. 135 million to run a company like this is really not that bad. Uh, and CapEx will increase over time significantly as the company grows. But for right now, they're working out of a warehouse, for crying out loud. They can do low volume production, okay? It, it's a chop shop uh, that's a $600 million company. Okay, again, go back, review, watch my uh, spiel on retail investors and, and look in the mirror and do all that stuff, okay? And then come back and talk to me, all right? This is an early stage company. Okay, and I find it really, really imagine the use of imagination to tie highly onto a SPAC and say that somehow it has a, a, a timeline, and therefore, if it doesn't meet that said timeline in uh, in comparison to other SPACs out there, that it's just going to dissolve away. It's going to go away. I heard that rationale, and I was intrigued. I, I'm always interested to hear different points of view. Um, it, it's the reason why I'm so smart in my application is because I actually listen to people and um, I can disagree. And I'm usually just like, hey, awesome, good job. Uh, I've moved away from the whole like, you know, even though I might disagree with it, uh, I'll take that disagreement for myself and, and formulate uh, my own thesis based on what I hear. And um, that content creator owes me nothing, you know, but this is an early company and it does have sales and it does have product, and it does have company strength, and it does have a lot going forward. But here's the thing, and I said this from the very beginning, any dollar that was uh, put toward this company on the onset, you would need to give it five years. Five, five. Five is the first benchmark for, for, for judging. And I, I don't understand the judgings that are going on right now, I don't. I, I don't understand it. If, if, if Hylion were to provide us one piece of, of negative uh, uh, context or some piece, and I don't consider delays in operations that, that, that is in the normal uh, scope of things, especially with what's going on right now, guys, right? So it's very, very important to acknowledge that this is an early stage company that is, is seemingly being judged right now as if they need to make sales now. Jason made this point, and I I think it was a kind of a shot to the community a little bit in that, look, 
it goes a little deeper than that. Although we don't expect sales right now, based on the newly developed uh, information that's been provided, in all fairness, Hylion said they would have sales right now. That, that, that's a fact, okay? So it's not just this endless you know, leash that we've given a company that is a publicly traded company to say, you said this and, and now it's something else, okay? So let's be kind of fair about that. I, I think maybe there are people out there, I think the realistic application in this is to suggest that, you know, eventually those sales have come. We've been provided proof of that on the Q4 call. And I, I don't understand having some epiphany right now on this company to suggest that somehow it's, it's a scam and that it just needs to dissolve away and go away. I, I, I don't understand that. I don't understand that at all. And perhaps maybe you can help me understand it in the comments below because um, I'm confused this week on, on this application. I, I really am. I don't, I don't get it. I don't know what's driving it. I don't know where it's coming from, but I, I, I'd like to understand what propaganda is being uh, spread about this company. And I will dispute it all. I, I don't, propaganda, what, what, what does that mean? Are you suggesting that the Hypertruck ERX does not exist? Are you suggesting that companies are, are, are not interested in it? Are you suggesting that it has just a really cool name and only gets 200 miles per, per fill up? What are you suggesting? You can't just say it doesn't get a thousand and then not back that up. That's as stupid as the presumption itself that Thomas Healy is presuming that it gets a thousand and somehow you interpret it as unvalidated or unsubstantiated. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand that. Help me understand. Help me. I'm begging you, YouTube community. Help me understand what I don't already understand about this company. Please help me understand and define my thesis further, okay? If I've got this thing wrong. If it doesn't get a thousand, what does it get? And where's the validation to prove that? It's equal on both sides, okay? It just turned out revenue for the first time. I think this is a good sign for an early company. It hasn't been around that long. If you look at the company now and you look at it two years ago, I would have invested in this company twice over. There's no doubt about it. I don't think there's been a lot that's changed in two years uh, then and now based on my conviction of, of where they could have been. In other words, I knew that they would be here two years ago. Um, and, and I presume that they're going to be significantly a different company as they continue to evolve and define themselves along their timeline uh, as, they, as they look to step toward that, that, uh, that integration with the fleets is super important. The next two years are going to be going to be huge. End of 2022, uh, fleets are going to start to take ownership of the control fleets demos um, that they got and then mass scale production after that. Um, what that could mean I don't know yet. Now, if you're going to draw up a bullish, a bearish thesis on this company, I, I'm going to offer some numbers now to you guys to just keep in mind, because this is what I've got floating around here. Um, I had Jason ask Thomas Healy about the OEM integration. Um, I, I, I wish it would have been me asking the question because I, I knew the intent of what I was trying to get to. And it's, I, I would rather just not send a question down if, if it's gonna be suggested that it was just answered on the earnings call. Well, it wasn't in the capacity that I was asking the question. Um, I can presume that the customer demand, the fleet demand is going to be huge, which could help drive some demand backfilled against the OEMs. I understand that, but does Thomas Healy truly understand that that OEM integration is paramount? It, it, it is the highly on story. If they make it, we've made it. If they don't, this stock will suffer and it will, it will fade into oblivion. It will go away. They, they cannot survive on anemic orders, okay? This cash is like an hourglass and it's turned up right now and it's got two years in my assessment. Some schools of thought would suggest that they've got three or four years, whatever. It doesn't matter. They are against the grid right now to get to this mass scale up because they're not going to recognize the 1.5 billion in bottom line profit, okay? Unless they get to that, they're sure as hell not going to realize this 135 million dollars of bottom line profit. Now, the reason why I mention that is I'm going to disclose some numbers to you guys. 
And I'd like to drive some of the focus from the community on this very thing. And the Discord group does a great job of, you know, taking, you know, meat off of the bone and, and, and taking it, really providing a nice thesis on, 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 on these things, it's projects. And you throw it in there and it's like a, a, a bunch of laughing hyenas that like, they go at it and they'll produce a really good product. And here's what I would suggest. I, I haven't heard anybody else suggest anything like this. And I apologize if somebody has already done this work. Uh, but for me, the question is really simple. How many units do they need to sell into the future to stay afloat? Right. It's, it's an honest question of well, what are we looking at here? Can we survive on 50 orders from Green Path Logistics? We can't, okay? Not even close, okay? And what I'm gonna suggest here is that we need 1,500 ERX sales per year minimum. 1,500 is what I come up with. I come up with $90,000 of profit per, per, per truck. If you guys would suggest that the profit margin could be larger than that or smaller than that, um, I, I would suggest that you leave your comments in the bottom of the video, okay? But if you take 1,500 trucks and you garner the $90,000 of profit per unit, that renders about $135 million. That covers all of the cost of, of, of operations for one year. One year, 1,500 minimum sales per year. And initially when I did these numbers, I looked at it and I thought, oh, we've got just over 2,000 right now since the inception of the company, okay? A lot of those orders have not been realized. So if they are able to turn out, let's say the first year after going mass scale production <laughs> of 1,500 uh, 1500 units or more, that will be the very line in the sand that I speak of in regards to the number of units that needs to be turned out. And again, I, I looked at the 1,500 and I thought, that seems lofty to me at this point. Uh, th they're going to have to work some things to make this happen, okay? You think, gosh, Ryan, you're speculating. You talk about facts all the time. Okay, here's a fact for you. They need to sell product to make it, okay? Stay with me on this, guys. There's a minimum number of units that they'll need to sell to stay afloat. Divide that 1,500 per by 12, you get 125 units per month. 125 consistent units per month. Some months may increase and we, get, we may get 250. Some months might may digress and we only get 80, okay? But we're not turning out those numbers now. No way. I mean, we get an order for 50 that at some undetermined date in the future will be realized, yes. But this is why I speak of the back order and how important that is to start to build that up. I'd like to see that to be 10,000 by the time we enter, enter into mass scale up. And then they can under, understand how they're gonna tackle that what I consider to be a bare minimum of operations for Hylion is to turn out the hyper truck at 125 units per clip. They cannot do that with Peterbilt alone. And this comes back to my question in, well, yeah, our thought was to just get Peterbilt on the line first and then down the line uh, approach those other OEMs or understand that the industry demand is such that these other OEMs will just fall in line yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know about that. I, I was a little disappointed in that. I really was. And if I had posed the question for me, I would have pressed a little bit more. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing that. I mean, Thomas Ely shits just like everybody else. It's okay. All right. He puts his pants on just like everybody else. It's okay. In an interview, man, you, you can press. And it wasn't going to be pressed because nobody understood the intent of my question in all fairness, but me. And um, that was what I was looking to get at is going the transition from low volume production to mass scale up and whether or not Hylian has identified those minimums. And I, it's scary to think of. And, and I, I would suggest maybe that they've, they've looked at it and they thought, okay, well, there's a hell of a lot of work to do to get to that point. If this company can get to 125 units as, as a baseline per month, we're in the money. Because I, I think eventually those orders will increase. Those orders will, 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 will creep up to 250 and, 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 and 375 and 500 per month. And then we're talking about 
incrementally stepping toward that bill, bill and a half of revenue, excuse me, not revenue, but growth, but profit, right? If they do a bill and a half of revenue at a 35% margin, well, there you go. There's your 375, $380 million of profit right there. They're covering the cost of overhead and they're generating profit. Just a fabulous, fabulous business model that I think in looking toward the horizon, these are some of the bare minimums that, that we're looking at. So 1,500 trucks per year is what I figured. $90,000 of profit per truck. Please correct me if I'm wrong on that. $135 million in gross profit to the bottom line to cover the cost of operations, which is aligned with what Sherry Baker said they need to run the business here on the low end, $135 to $145 million uh, in 2022. 125 units per month uh, as, as a minimum. And those are the numbers that I'm going to be uh, paying particular attention to uh, as this company evolves over the next couple of years. That will be year four. We'll have one bonus year above that. At the end of year five, we will look at a holistic review of where this company was, where they've been, where they're going, because we'll have a whole lot more answers at that point on whether or not they're able to meet these bare minimum numbers um, that I'm, I'm projecting to you now. The team is a net positive. Um, Thomas Healy talks about this almost every time. Um, again, this was a question that Jason posed for me and I do appreciate it. Uh, and again, I wish it was something that I was able to ask Thomas because I would ask it um, in my way. Because again, when you have somebody communicating the intent of your question, it, 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 it doesn't come across the way that I would ask it. It came across the way Jason would ask it. And it was great. But the way, the way I wanted it posed is to understand there's an aggressive build out of the team. There's an aggressive build out of the board. There's an aggressive and, and concerted effort to build out the board of directors, the build out, the build out, the build out from top to bottom of the team. And you have a stock at $4, okay? Huge disconnect between what Thomas Healy is seeing as far as a vision within the company, feedback that he's receiving from industry to give him that ability to define that bullish hypothesis for the company in light of a stock price that's being priced at liquidation. The stock market is providing no value at all over the company above its liquidation value, maybe 100, 125 million of, of value, but that's silly, guys. When, when you're looking at valuing uh, a tech slash industrial company like this, it's insane, okay? So my question was, what do you see? What are you seeing? Uh, in light or in the face of such a distinct uh, disparity between the goings on at Hylian Holdings uh, and the stock HYLN. That's the way I would pose that. Okay. Uh, the, the product itself, fabulous. I thought the ride along with Jason and Thomas, I thought that was really cool. Um, when he actually had the chance to ride, it was cool seeing um, the, 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 the comfort ride. It's huge. Uh, and, and I think the product is, is something to continually focus on. I thought the walk around to the truck was really, really interesting. Getting to see the inside of it was extremely interesting and actually see a buddy of mine in there driving the truck. I, it was cool when Thomas took over and put, put the metal to the metal and he's like, yeah, we got to end on a high note. That's kind of cool, you know, and he, he thought, you know, I want you to take, take back a few nuggets and understand what we're so excited about. Um, and I, I think Thomas Healy and the team are going to continue to foot stomp the excitement around the product going forward, um, I think there has been nothing but positive feedback turned back. And you might say, well, that, that's presumptuous on your part, Ryan. Oh, okay. Boy, I tell you, some of the presumptions that are thrown around about this company are, are far more off base than that. All I'm doing is deriving what I feel like is pretty positive consensus surrounding the feedback that they've received from the fleets who have visited uh, down there at the high headquarters and taken the same experience as Jason did. I, 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 I don't know, you know, the levels of presumption on my part are, are interesting. And I, I, I would rather consider them insightful as, a, as opposed to presumptuous. Something that we don't talk about very often. And, you know, it's interesting too, man. I'm going to wear this hat with pride. It doesn't show up very good with my green. It is, it is fluorescent green. Um, but this was a gift from Thomas. There we go. I'll put it in front of the, the green screen um, and, and show its true colors there. Um, but I'll, I'll wear this with pride. Um, I'll 
it, it's it's a cause that you can get behind. And I think investors, I think drivers, I think the new generation um, coming up here over the next 20 years are going to define um, this movement toward a greener future. I do. Smart green. I, that's that's my only ask of the new generation is don't just look on the surface, but look below the surface. And Hylion is the first one that's ever challenged the notion of cradle to the grave, where these batteries and all these Teslas are going. Um, does it suggest that you know they're just disappearing after they're done or are they ending up in landfills? I, I, I don't know. Where's the power that is generating these electric vehicles gonna come from? Can the grid handle it? Um, th this speaks to my bullish conviction on Hylion specifically and my, 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 my acknowledgement of their vision of, of a future going forward in that you have to look at the complete chain of where the energy comes from, how it's being utilized and how it's being captured within our rigs and what the final disposition of those, um, those components will be. And, and I think we, we really missed the ball with this EV rollout. I, 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 I think Thomas Healy is really trying to strike up a more uh, deep, deeper discussion on this. And, and he's the only one that I hear that is trying to probe those further discussions with regard to the, the, re the reality of, of taking this solution and, and, and making it a viable solution for fleets to actually run and be more efficient and not have to give so much give back in, in power, payload, charging time, uh, uh, resource availability, fueling, infrastructure, et cetera, those types of things. And I, I just think the cause is one of those things that speaks to my next interesting point on this is, is the movement. And it, and it goes back to my comment about some of these folks that can just invent a Hylion too and just put Hylion out of business. Well, haven't, have, why haven't they done it? Why hasn't Cummins done this? You can look at Meritor in a couple of different ways. Perhaps maybe they're looking to integrate into this opportunity rather than challenge and put Hylion out of the business. Thomas Healy never talks from a perspective of, of fearing competition. He's only acknowledged it. And he's acknowledged it close enough to one of his products to suggest that maybe there may not be a useful life for the hybrid EX product. That's as close as he's acknowledged to the competition out there on the landscape. But aside from that, he speaks from a position of confidence and one that suggests that this Hypertruck ERX may just have the potential to dominate the industry. And I think he's right. And the movement that should take place from now over the next 20 years should see a more pronounced integration of different fueling sources, whether it be uh, compressed natural gas, whether that be renewable natural gas, whether that be diesel in certain applications, yes, um, less dependent on, therefore the demand will fall, therefore the, the price should uh, moderate a little bit if everybody's not just stuck with one specific option. I mean, what are fleets options right now? They have to run diesel, they don't have a choice. And I think optionality over the next coming years um, in the fleets is going to be key in realizing the success of this industry, all right? But the movement, the ability to take a truck, put it out on the road and actually have it be uh, more conducive to a cleaner environment is, is exciting. It's, it's, it's worth getting behind. And I can understand some of the angst. I get it. My eyes are wide open. I get it with the stock price. Uh, what I don't get it is some of the content through social media that would just come out and blatantly just throw it out there when I know they're bullish on this movement. I, I, I don't get it. Like, are you truly behind the movement or are you just all about the, the optics of it? Getting behind a movement that is politically correct to get, get behind. I, I'm, not, I'm not a tree hugger. I'm not one of those guys that have been traditionally been called upon with marches that, that demand that we do away with fossil fuel. I'm not in that camp. I'm not. But do I think that the Hylion solution is better for the planet than without? Absolutely. That's why I just don't understand some of the motives behind some of these comments, which got me fired up, obviously, at the beginning of this video. But keep your eye on the prize here. 
you either invest or not in this company. Is because you invest in the company, does that give you the opportunity to just come up with these harebrained ideas to suggest somehow that Hylion does not share in the very vision that I share with you guys in, in, in a cleaner future to help these companies reduce the greenhouse emission scores within their company as a whole? The Hylion solution does that. It doesn't suggest that maybe these companies are just smoke and mirrors and they're saying what's politically correct and that they're not interested in reducing greenhouse gas emissions within their fleets. I, I, I listen intently to these directors of many companies, Wegmans, Werner, Ryder, speak along this front and they are all unified in this front in a lot of different capacities, driver safety and security, driver satisfaction, cleaning the environment, lowering greenhouse emissions, increasing efficiency, reducing their reliance upon a diesel a dominated future, right? The time is now. And in one word, I suggest that perhaps maybe something in large or small part that can help with your conviction on this opportunity is in one word, the movement. It's the movement toward a cleaner future. And the question is, does Hylion have a solution that can help contribute to that end? The answer is either yes or no. I'm not going to suggest that, you, that, that, that I give you that answer. My answer is yes, but you have to deliberate and provide that answers for yourself. The last thing that was asked on the interview that I liked was the government incentive uh, question. That was from Dave, who's a part of my community. Really appreciate him taking that in the TURP program. Um, he did offer the ZEB credits. Um, as part of the recalibration of the Hypertruck ERX to meet that specific carve out in the regulations. We're a little premature, but here's the thing. Does that not set up the Hypertruck ERX for a catalyst down the line? Put the pieces together, guys. All right. In closing, I want to talk about just one little thing here, and then we'll wrap it up for my, uh, again, long-winded video. I'm long-winded. I find it interesting how those people still keep coming back so they can throw pop shots at me. This is a stock. This is a company. It is not perfect. No company is. Make sure that you step back for a second. And if you're going to make an evaluation before you throw out to social media, especially, this is what I do. Understand how, how that message is going to be received. And ask yourself this very, very simple question. Is it for their benefit or for yours? You know, I don't do this to do it. I don't do this for me. I do this for you. I own the company. I'm fine. I'm more fine now going through what I've gone through over the last 24 months of owning this company than I ever was 24 months ago. Would I want to go through it again? Nope, not in a million years. But my conviction of the company is based on the feedback that I'm getting. And companies are not perfect insofar as Hylion could have just done what a number of other companies do. They go off into the horizon, never to be heard from again. To provide barriers that are not possibly be overcome. I'll talk about a stock price that really would have been recessed. I don't know if it would have made a huge bit of difference at this point, but you know, I find it interesting. The tone and tenor of this company over the last 24 months has improved and it's improved big time in the face of a 2022 that has been just utterly disastrous. And what does Hylian Holdings do in conducive markets? That's of interest. I would challenge the investor community to continue to derive hypotheses that are surrounded by those questions that are important. What are the bare minimum of units that need to be sold to keep the lights on at Hylian Holdings? Now that's a question. That's an insightful question. You might not like it. You might think, well, hell, Ryan, they're never going to sell anything. So what's the point in asking the questions? Fair enough. Fair enough. Come up with other thesis. What does Hylian need to do to succeed rather than what Hylian is doing right now is going to, delete, to lead to, to failure? See the difference in that application? 
I, I can identify the glass half full or half empty. Um, and I try to do both for you guys. I really do. But in either case, I really try to have some level of factual uh, information that backs up my hypothesis, whether it be on the bear or the bull case. And I always try to answer for you guys whether or not this information is being provided for your benefit or mine. I can in all honesty tell you that I put this content out for your benefit. I'm set. I'm good. My position is set. My cost average is, le is less than 10 bucks. I'm good to go. I have three more years on my longstanding conviction on this company to judge and base it year over year. Um, at the five-year mark, we'll take another look-see and we'll see where we are. It's just that simple. The way I look at it is I'm 3.9% toward my 100% goal. And when we get there, I will share that with you. And I will absolutely remind you about times like this. Um, I'll be the governor. I have no problem. Um, I'll be the marshal. I have no problem. It's no problem. Because the very people that are throwing pop shots right now should be those very people that, again, wake up, look at the opportunity. If you don't like the opportunity, then go find some other thing to do with your time. Because I am 100% convicted on this mission. And those people who consume this content with me, I expect to at least be able to derive a thesis that is either on the bull case or the bear case that has some level of fundamental fact basing those uh, observations when they're put out to social media for the benefit of the good. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to the message. I invite you to leave your comments at the bottom. Subscribe to the channel if you like the content. If you don't, unsubscribe and I'll never see you again. Hit the thumbs up if you like it. Hit the notification bell. We'll be with you in the next video. Guys, thank you so much for staying with me through the totality of this video and good luck in your investment future.